What's up squad, it's your squid, back at it again with a video for my history playlist. Uh, I got a funky new keyboard and I've been pumping out the scripts the last few days in case you can't tell. For this video I'm sticking with my theme of late and as you can tell from the title and the thumbnail of the video it's probably fair to say it's going to be a pretty controversial topic. Uh, I'm sure we will be able to agree or disagree in the comments section but do me a favour and consider joining the channel, sending a super thanks or buying something from one of my affiliates with the codes in the description or something like that, or just straight up sending me money via PayPal, as it's unlikely that this video will gain a lot of traction with the algorithms. I like eating food and paying rent and all that other useful human survival shit, so yeah, do me a solid. There are links for all the different options of support in the description below. Uh, but besides all the financial side of things, do me a solid like, comment and share because it all helps. Uh, when you join the channel as a financial member, you get your name in this list. So, you know, don't you want your name in this list? Everyone on this list is better than the people that they dislike. So, from this point forward, the whole screen is just going to be images related to the issue uh, or related to Australia in general. You're not going to see my gorgeous face. Uh, so if you've got YouTube Premium and you've got some dishes you need to do, plop me in your pocket, lock your screen, not in that order, uh, and then, yeah, take me into the kitchen and get it done. Get it done. I'll see you after the jingle, guys. Thank you so much for clicking on the title or the thumbnail of this video, guys. Whichever led you here, I'm thankful for it. Regular viewers of the channel will know this already, but just in case you're new, for most of the videos I make in this history playlist, I spend a lot of time setting up the context for how and why something occurred, rather than just talking about the event itself in question and making you guess. Generally speaking, I feel like it's more important to understand why an event occurred than what the specifics of the event occurring are, and although I'll concede that may be in an unpopular opinion, it's my YouTube channel and I'll do what I want. So if you don't like it, feel free to click away. Anyway, I mentioned my usual technique because I'm not actually doing that for this video. Well, not fully anyway. The Woomera Detention Centre was a facility that housed asylum seekers, potential refugees. The folks who had arrived in Australia via boat seeking a new life and seeking the help we had long since promised anyone who may need it. I mentioned that I usually provide a lot of context in videos because for this one I'm not, I'm assigning you some prior viewing to ascertain the context. I've literally never done this before and so I have no idea if I'll have done it correctly but I'm determined to learn how to do it so here we are in the, you know, including it in the script anyway. At the top of the screen there, there should be a grey bubble clickable link thing. A card, I think YouTube calls it. Click on that if you want to know some background on asylum seeker policy in Australia prior to this moment in time. In fact, I'll do two clickable bubble things if I learn how. The first link is the video I made about the children overboard scandal in 2002, which was when the government lied and said asylum seekers were murdering their own children on their way to Australia. No, really. And the second is a link to the video I did on John Howard holistically. Howard was the Prime Minister at the time, and his treatment of asylum seekers is a key component in why I consider him an absolute asshole of monumental proportions. I make no apologies for the self-promotion and the prior viewing I'm suggesting. They provide context that is not central to the t telling of this story, but will give you a broader understanding of the lead-up to the events regardless. So yeah, feel free to click those if they're there, but let's get into the Woomera story properly now. This video is about when regular people everyday citizens with sticks and rocks, stormed the Woomera Detention Centre in a riot and let out all the poor fuckers that were trapped on the inside. Over a thousand regular citizens and activists freed over 50 detainees that day, including a pregnant woman, and many young men who had been imprisoned for over three years at that point for no internationally recognised crime. The notorious Woomera facility was situated around 300 miles north of Adelaide and on the 28th of March 2002 was the focal point for a national day of protest against the government's mandatory detention of all undocumented migrants, including women and children. This policy was a shift from traditional Australian values of egalitarianism and, despite a large volume of protesting at the time from people who could see the broader effect of the policy, social apathy towards quote-unquote political issues and a general fear of the unknown made it seem less important to the general populace than it actually was. Worse still, it seems in the modern day to have led to the bastards who instigated these policies not just getting away with it, but falsely being praised as elder statesmen from the good old days. I'd like to take this moment as a 31-year-old man who grew up and spent his formative years under the Howard-led Liberal Party government just to say, trust me, there was nothing good about the Howard era. 
Even gun control, which he's often lauded as being the instigator of, required a world record-beating massacre in order for him to act. The man is a dick. But anyway, almost a thousand protesters arrived in buses to camp outside the Woomera facility on the Easter long weekend that year, where they met up with local Kakatha and Arabana Aboriginal peoples who had already been there waiting. The Kakatha and Arabana peoples had been quite vocal about how unhappy they were with the presence of the cruel facility on their traditional lands. I expect they would have been more perturbed regardless of what actually occurred in the building, but the irony was not lost on them that the facility was being used to house people who had arrived without permission by people who had arrived without permission, at the very least from their perspective. At the peak of the protest, refugees, mainly from Afghanistan, Iraq and Iran, climbed on the roofs of the cramped cabins in the heavily fortified compound and chanted visa, visa. At sunset, the protesters broke through an outer fence and stormed the place. A number of refugees scaled the five metre high barbed wire fence wherein the prote protesters then also helped them to escape. Sources at the time tell us that one refugee sprinted out of the detention centre and shouted, after two years, I'm free. A report broadcast on a police scanner suggested that some protesters had thrown bolt cutters to the detainees so they could cut through wire and metal fencing and leave the compound. It later emerged that a metal bar was passed through the fence and used like a crowbar to prise open part of it. One woman dashed through a hole in the fence with both arms raised yelling, freedom, freedom, although she was immediately tackled by a security guard. Protesters wrestled her free and she was one of the ten or so refugees who lived in a tent city of sorts outside the facility with the protection of protesters for a week or so after the protest. After the breakout, the police set up roadblocks to stop any more protesters joining the action, which drew ire from activists at the time and has done since too, the argument being that the police were good little lapdogs without a shred of compassion in their bodies, that, that they were class traitors and that all cops are bastards, etc, etc. But the protests had been expected by the authorities for weeks. Remember, this is 2002 we're talking about, so the activists were organising by SMS at best, and definitely not on social media or via encrypted means of mass discussion. I distrust and dislike law enforcement as much as any other self-respecting stoner, and I generally agree that cops make situations worse, not better in situations like this. But, I'm just postulating here... Letting the event occur and then vaguely doing the bare minimum in response doesn't sound like the work of class traders to me, I'm just saying. I get that they weren't storming the facility as well, riot shields and police buttons in hand, but each to their own, according to their ability, is a phrase often halved when it shouldn't be, in my opinion. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. My point is the police had ample opportunity to stop anyone ever arriving at the facility in the first place, and they didn't do that. They let bus after bus go through to the point where they knew they were more, there were more people than could be handled in the event of a riot. Now, if you wanted to blame that on incompetence, I'd be more willing to hear your argument. But personally, I think there were people in the police force who agreed with the movement, and that's all I'm saying on that. Woomera Immigration Detention Centre was built on a defence site in South Australia, in the middle of nowhere in the outback of the Australian desert, about two hours' drive from the nearest port, Port Augusta. It was opened in 1999 by the Howard government and closed in 2003 by the same mouldy pond scum masquerading as a government. Despite widespread condemnation to the point of society breaking open a building and letting the refugees out, Howard didn't close the facility so he could pivot back to being a welcoming and charitable country. He did it so he could instead open facilities on Nauru, Manus Island and Christmas Island. Tiny islands, hundreds of kilometres from the Australian coastline, so that no one could arrive to riot and break them out again. Think Azkaban from Harry Potter or Alcatraz here in America, but further away from the mainland. Today, Australia runs at least 10 offshore and onshore immigration detention centres holding mostly refugees and asylum seekers who have arrived via boat. Some have been detained for more than three years, which is certainly a step up from the 10 years some had been held for under Howard, but it's still not good enough. At last count, the number of detainees was about 3,500, about the same number detained in 2003 when Woomera was closed. When Anthony Albanese and the Labour Party won government in May of 2022, they did so by making a number of election promises. 
In relation to asylum seeker policy, sadly, the Labor Party promised to not make any dramatic changes to the decades-old policy of offshore detention in case it set off a new round of arrivals, but promised to be more compassionate and increase the rate of speed in which cases of asylum seekers were assessed. As of the point of writing this, the average time spent in detention in Australia for a potential refugee is 689 days. And there are, there are still extreme cases of people who have been held without charge for over 10 years. Those people are still being held because they supposedly don't meet the requirements to be released into the public, but also cannot be sent home as they'll likely be murdered upon their arrival in the Middle East. Some of them have children who were born in international waters and therefore have no home to go to. And when I think of those babies, I get equal parts angry and sad. In the second verse of Australia's National Anthem, one line in particular says, To those who come across the sea with boundless plains to share. And as an Australian, who admittedly wasn't there at the writing of those lyrics, I'd wager they were probably written, written with stateless victims of circumstance in fucking mind. And if they weren't, that's how we should interpret them in 2022 anyway. Labor's policy platform states it will operate a humane and risk-based immigration detention policy and agrees that detention that is indefinite or otherwise arbitrary is not acceptable and the lengths and conditions of detention will be subject to regular review. Without a commitment to actual legislative change, without a commitment to an appeals process or arbitration, without a commitment to consistent action on this topic and actual change, the status quo is unlikely to shift. It's Australia's greatest shame, and everyday Australians can do little about it. In 2002, we literally stormed the Woomera detention facility, and all it did was make the Howard government go harder, instigating Azkaban-like islands that we couldn't bum-rush him about. Fingers crossed it stops being profitable to demonise asylum seekers sometime soon, but for now, friends, that's the end of the video. In total, there were 56 arrests after the 1,000-plus crowd stormed the facility on that day in 2002, and there were no charges successfully placed in court. Several of the asylum seekers who escaped that day were never located, but the vast majority of them were caught and resubmitted to the system. It's truly a modern-day story of the people versus the government, and I'll just leave you with this little nugget as I finish up. In 1996, six years prior, Australians handed back their guns in the world's most expensive buyback scheme after the world's worst massacre leading up to that time. It's since been topped by the Vegas shooting in 2017, but that's not the point. If the thousand plus protesters had been packing heat, do you think asylum seeker policy would have shifted so dramatically? Do you think if the people with bolt cutters and tent cities had a couple of AK-47s to stop the cops raiding them and taking back their prisoners, would we be talking about a much bloodier event in Australian history? We'll never know, but I'd be interested to see what you think in the comments section below. Thank you so much if you've watched this entire video up to this point. Do me a solid and hit the like button if you're still here, because it really helps me get more views via the algorithm. Poke around the channel if this is the first time you've come across me, and consider clicking the join button if you feel like giving me some money on a month-by-month -month basis. These people here do just that, and they're the absolute bee's knees. The duck's nuts. The, I don't know, something else that rhymes. I'll see you when I look at you, squad. You'll see me when you look at me. Thanks so much for watching.